Hello, this is Coaster Crew 1, and today I will be reviewing Storm Chaser at Kentucky Kingdom. This was actually my second favorite coaster, new coaster, I rode this summer, behind Voyage, of course, and it has good reasoning for that. It's super strong ejector airtime, fu super fun inversions. And it looks like it has pacing issues, but it never feels like it has a slow or dull moment. It's about sustained airtime, not so much about just like quick pops, but the sustained, that's crazy. Like, it's the strongest airtime I've been on, on a, I've had on a coaster, and it's just absolutely insane. And it's to be sustained while being the strongest airtime on a coaster I've ridden. So you start out with the ride, just going straight, and then you make a little turn, a uh, right hand turn. It's nothing special, but yeah, then you get such a great view. And then you go up the chain lift, and the weird thing is, I don't know if it's always like this, but the day I went, it just keeps on speeding up. It like gets, it starts out slow and then starts up, gets faster and faster and faster till you reach the top. As you crest the lift, you get a good view of the area and what drop you're about to go down. So you go through this really fun drop, which is floaty in the front and whippy in the back. And then you know it's going to be insane when it's already starting out with its weakest airtime moment right there that's sustained. Then you go through an overbank turn, flash inversion, and kind of like a off-axis airtime hill, another one, and then another overbank turn then more sustained airtime. Then you go through this really fun zero-g roll that gives a break from the airtime, and then the strongest airtime, the trick track double up. Doesn't look that strong, but it's insane. Then the second strongest moments, the double down. Then you go through this turn, which is pretty fun, looks slow, but does not feel slow at all. Then you go into one last strong ejector airtime moment with laterals, and then you hit the brakes. When I went, they were just running one train, which is, it was okay because it never got more than a five minute wait. I know somebody, after they wrote it, they wrote it their first time and said, no, we're going back to T3, that hurt. They're, they're like, that hurt my legs. I'm like, huh. yes, it does. The airtime on this ride, yes, it hurts. But it's not as painful as T3's restraints. But T3's still a fun, good ride. But yeah, it's the airtime is painful. I had bruises after riding it seven times throughout the day. But yeah, I would say that um, this has the strongest airtime on a coaster I've ridden, and it gets stronger throughout the ride. The more, um, the further you go into the ride, the stronger it gets, and you just can't believe it's gonna get stronger. And uh, um, but yeah, it's a really fun ride. The back is my favorite row, but the front's also really fun. Also, on the um, the first sustained airtime hill. Somebody had a water bottle and their phone, and their phone flew out of their pocket, and their water bottle, like, open, like, it was open for some reason, or it was like a cup, and the water just, like, fl spilled all over us. It was so weird. I, I thought it was, like, somebody thrown up or something, which was kind of scary. <laughs> um, but yeah, and after the ride finished, we saw their phone, it was on the ground, it flew up, like, 20, 30 feet into the air, at least. It was crazy, and we saw on the ground, they get, they, um, the staff got it at the end of the day and we saw it um, and their phone was just like complete it was actually t in two pieces like the screen had completely come off it just shows you how strong this airtime is but yes I'd say I'd give this ride a 10 out of 10 as it is my number four or five can't decide exactly if I like this or twist cyclone more I think I give the edge to this because of how insane it is but twisted cyclones a little more rewritable but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this review. This has been Alex from Coast Crew 1. Thank you. Bye.